Hello, everyone. Well, as she just said, I'm here to talk about live streaming without plugins, apps, or scripts. Um, I work with DDV Tech. We make Mist Server. Our booth is right over there. So if after the talk you look like to see what we do, definitely drop by. All right. So live streaming uh, video or audio is actually pretty easy. Uh, actually, um, that, that's, that's what everyone thinks. That's how it really is. However, there's a few little uh, glitches and things that make it harder than you would imagine. For example, making it work everywhere is not really that easy after all. I mean, if you have a single phone and you want to play something on there, okay, you can do that. But if you want it to work on every single phone, every single tablet, every Mac, every PC, on Linux boxes, on gaming consoles, then suddenly it becomes a nightmare. So many people have a solution for this and they use a plugin, say Flash Player, for example. But plugins don't really solve everything. There's a couple of issues involved with them. For example, you have cross-platform issues, like the plugin has to be available on all the platforms that you want to use your video on. You have cross-device issues. Uh, even if you have a single platform, some devices might need a special driver, special hardware acceleration, and it might not work. And of course, there are security issues. I think everyone has heard about a plugin or another, I won't name any, to, to have the recent security issues and suddenly get a whole bunch of uninstalls and then suddenly your video doesn't work anymore. Uh, plus, there's the whole um, trouble of an extra step being required the first time this plugin is used. It has to be installed. And if it's not installed yet, that's a hassle for your users, and they might drop off. So if you want to get this working on cell phones, the, the default solution is to just release an application instead. And releasing application has kind of the same problems. I mean, security is less of a problem, because those are usually sandboxed. And sandboxed applications, well, there's not that much that can go wrong, really. But you still have the same cross-platform issues. You have to release your application for Android. You have to release it for iOS. You have to release it for Windows Mobile. And you still have the same nightmare, really. And you have the same cross-device issues, because they all have different screen sizes. You have to optimize for this. They have different hardware chips. So you're kind of in the same trouble. And it's still an extra step to install those applications. So it doesn't really help in the end. So then many people resort to scripting instead. Um, scripting. Theoretically, it works everywhere. You can get it working on any browser that has JavaScript, which is practically every browser nowadays. It does have a few disadvantages. For example, DRM, it's really hard to pull off in scripts because they are sent to the client completely. So you have to do some kind of obfuscating, or there needs to be a part in the browser already. And then you go back to the same issues that I just talked about for all the other solutions. So it's, it's hard or impossible, depending on your definition of impossible. And of course, the user that is trying to watch your video may have actually disabled scripting. And if you're used to, to having a script available, then yeah, well, you can't really continue anymore. Uh, for video on demand, however, this is a lot easier. You can just put an MP4 file online or a GP, 3GP file, which is really the same thing with a few changes in the configuration. And it works practically everywhere. I mean, you can run this on, on any Android phone. You can run it on any iOS phone or tablet. You can run it on most gaming consoles, even. And there's not really any computer that won't play an MP4 file. So it works practically everywhere. And you usually don't have to do any configuration. You don't have to do any setup. You don't need any scripts. You don't need any plugins. It just plays. So why do we not use MP4 for life? Well, we already do, of course. We have HSS, which is basically MP4 with an XML file in front of it. And we have Dash, which is MP4 with another XML file in front of it in a slightly different format. And both of these, they work, but they have a few disadvantages. Both HSS and Dash still require either a plugin, an app, or scripting, or sometimes a combination of all three. So we're kind of back to square one, and that's yeah, not, not, not really a good solution. I mean, they're great protocols, but they have the same problems that everything else does. So why is MP4 Live so complicated exactly? Well, MP4, as, as a, in the specification, has that there has to be a header in front that all data uh, that, that is in the file needs to be listed in the header. And this is a bit of a problem with life because live files are continuously growing. So you don't know all the data because it's still being created. And HSS and Dash solve this with refreshing manifests that contain short little segments. And each segment will have the complete header for that little segment. And these will usually be between a few seconds to half a minute or so long. And this works, of course, because you can use add-on segments and then refresh the, the manifest and your, your stream is working. 
So isn't there some other way to get this working that doesn't require scripting, because that manifest has to be read by something? Well, the MP4 spec actually allows multiple headers and multiple data fields alternating, so you can progressively stream the file by just sending a header and then some data and then another header and then some data and keep continuing. And in theory, this should work just as well as VOD does. So you should just be able to include your file and you should just be able to watch it. So does this actually work? Because we tried this out and the answer is it absolutely works. Out of the box, it works on IE, it works on Edge, Chrome, Safari, Opera, most versions of Firefox depending on a few icky details. It works on any Android phone, any Windows phone. Actually, we've got it pretty much working everywhere except on iOS devices. We're not quite sure yet why we're working on that. However, for uh, iOS devices, you can just resort back to HLS. And HLS is something that our software supports as well on exactly the same configuration. So in the end, now you have a solution that can work without plugins, without apps, without scripting on anything. Um, yeah, that's what I just said. It makes the streams on the fly. Um, it can output many different formats, and one, two of those are HLS and MP4, five, MP4 Live. So, yeah, we have a solution now. Uh, it's a standard feature in the new 2.4 release that we released just a few days ago. You're welcome to come check it out. You can also just go to our website, uh, which is right here, yeah, our website. Uh, we have a lot of information on there. You can contact us, you can ask us questions, you can request a trial version. And that was my talk, so if there's any questions now, I'll take them. <laughs>